Hello YouTube and welcome to an all new Elder Scrolls lore video. Today we're talking about Archmage Deneth, the Archmage in charge of the College of Winterhold before Sappho's Arryn, who we see in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Now, we used to have just a very small amount of lore on this guy, which was all in one or two lore books and a dialogue line, but he plays a role in the story of the new official Elder Scrolls board game. Now here's the thing, Modiphius and Bethesda had the awesome idea to give me a set of the board game so I could actually tell all of you about the story and the lore added by the board game, which is all canon and approved by Bethesda by the way. Uh, a link to the board game is in the description if you want to check it out for yourself, but for now let's talk about Archmage Deneth and about the board game after the video. So Archmage Deneth, he was a dark elf archmage of the College of Winterhold who was in charge of the college during both the Great Collapse and during the Great War. Uh, in Skyrim itself he has just one name mentioned in the book on the Great Collapse, which is simply where we learn his name and in some dialogue mentions and other lore books where people simply talk about the archmage we learn a little bit more about him. Now one of the things we know he did from the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is presiding over the college during the Great Collapse, when the Great Collapse took place near 122 of the Fourth Era. Now this was when gigantic waves battered the cliffs on which the city of Winterhold was built for almost a year until the coast completely collapsed. Now Winterhold used to be one of Skyrim's biggest cities, I mean the College of Winterhold used to be essentially in the middle of the city, so considering the way it looks now you can get a picture of how much of the city was lost. Archmage Deneth, who had already known that people distrusted mages after the Oblivion Crisis, immediately knew that people would blame the mages of the college for the Great Collapse, especially since the college itself managed to stay relatively unharmed, due to the powerful magics that protected its foundations. He was the Archmage who tried to convince people of all over Skyrim, especially in Winterhold, that the mages were not responsible for the Collapse. Although, his success was fairly limited, as by the time of the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim the video game, we know that a lot of people do blame the college. Now, we also learned that he was the type of archmage to have favorite students who he'd let get away with far more stuff than those students he did not consider to be one of his favorites. And it's also suggested that he may have been the last archmage to have been advised by a member of the Sigic Order who used to advise the archmages of the College of Winterhold. Uh, since he's a dark elf and thus has quite a long lifespan, meaning that he may have been around as archmage uh, since before the disappearance of Arteum in the Fourth Era. He also may have been the Archmage to get his hands on one of the stones of Berenzia's crown as those got scattered around Skyrim far before Sappho's Arryn got in power. Uh, around the start of the fourth era they got scattered, although considering that's more than a hundred years before the events of the Great Collapse, that may have also been a different Archmage before Deneth, but considering the long lifespans of Dark Elves, it's not far to reach that it was Deneth. Now that's about all we learn about him in the Skyrim video game, but in the new Skyrim board game, which again has an original story approved and checked by Bethesda, so canon, in the final year of the Great War and the year after that, he actually plays a role in that story and is often name dropped. This is actually something that I really appreciate while playing through the game's story, as the writers really did their homework on which characters would be around during the time of the story and who wouldn't be, instead of, you know, just littering the story with fan favorites. And they actually gave them life, these kind of characters, by giving them a role in the story and a whole personality. Because during the story of the board game, we learn that Deneth, unlike his successor Sappho's Arryn, was actually quite vain and arrogant. While under Sappho's Arryn, the bar of entry to enter the College of Winterhold was simply to cast some basic spells, you know, to check whether you are even in tune with magic. Under Archmage Deneth, people really just needed to prove their magical prowess by doing whatever Deneth felt like that day. Which could very much include showing, you know, that you can magically sculpt a rock into a bust of Deneth himself to serve as decoration for the college. Uh, we actually know this because this is what we need to do in order to enter the college in the game. On top of that, he can also have a bit of a temperament and he can be a bit of a coward. I say this because during the main story, which I will cover in a later video, we are in dire need of some help as the player. We come to the college hoping that Deneth will help us and he will simply say, that he's just really not in the mood to help you. And one of the options to actually get him to help you is by cheering him up, by embarrassing yourself, by attempting to juggle. And even then, when he is cheered up, 
when he hears that you need help with the Daedric Prince, he just tries to get rid of you as he's kind of scared to go up against a Daedric Prince. Uh, when you actually do keep bugging him, he'll say, okay, you know what, I'll help you, but complete this impossible task of trying to convince some of the college's most vocal enemies that we are not responsible for the Great Collapse. You can actually do this with a really hard dice roll. I mean, the easier option would be to search help somewhere else, but you can try to convince these people. And even if you have high speed skills, it's actually quite a hard dice roll. <laughs> Only to then find out that if you succeeded, Deneth never really intended to help you, as he never really thought you'd be able to do it, and he's just too scared to go to go up against the Daedra for some reason. So when you return, he once more tries to get rid of you instead of help you. And you then have the option to go beg, cry, and plead with him to please help you as the powerful mage that he is. A second really hard dice roll that needs to be undertaken and if you somehow complete that he will sympathize with your crying but he still will not help you as he is just too afraid for the Daedric Prince and instead tries to get you to bugger off by trying to help you in a different way either by teaching you a powerful spell, give you a decent enchanted item or offering to send one of the college mages with you against the Daedric Prince instead of going himself. I mean, honestly, that was a pretty funny part to play, as there are way easier methods to complete the story and get the information that you need, but I just wanted to bother this guy, although it was kind of a pain in the ass to, you know, get all the correct dice rolls. Anyway, despite all this, he is not just some incompetent asshole. I mean, he is quite proficient in magic and is able to teach you quite useful spells, and near the end of the Great War, he's even willing to shelter X-Blades inside the College of Winterhold against the Thalmor. Basically, these blades all were accomplished mages that could help with the college's research work in, you know, in exchange for their freedom. Now, we don't know for how long Deneth remained in charge after the Great War. Uh, by the time of the video game, obviously, Savos Aran has been in charge for quite some time. But considering he was there during the Great Collapse up until at least a year after the Great War ended, we know that he must have been in charge of the college for at least 54 years. Uh, maybe more, considering the long lifespans of the Dark Elves. And as such, it's actually quite likely that he may have even hired people like Tolvdir, who've been at the college for a very long time, as the presumably before Savos Aran became Archmage. Now, that said, that's basically all I can say about Archmage Deneth. Uh, like I said, I can really appreciate Modifius and Bethesda actually delving into the lore and expanding the lore that we have on topics like this, which were previously unexplored. Now, if you want to try the board game for yourself, I put a link to the page to the board game in the description, and I also put a link to my video where I interview the lead writer of the game on their lore choices and their relationship with Bethesda Game Studios while writing it. Um, because he revealed that Bethesda basically approved and gave feedback on everything, which is why I consider this game to be canon. That said, I do hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Huge thanks to Modifius and Bethesda for giving me the opportunity to cover the lore by providing a review copy of the game. I will be making some more videos on the main quests and other things that we learned in the future. The game was actually quite fun to play, honestly. Uh, it can be played solo for the story, although it's a bit more fun with friends. Uh, and I can very much recommend checking it out. Again, link is in the description. Now, if you learned something today, be sure to return for the next Elder Scrolls lore video, probably next week or the week after. And now all that rests me is to vocally thank my top Patreon supporters. Mr. Bernardo Binda, Gabriel Binda, Polaris Poutine, Athena Hayotis, King Chris, Bolts, Curve of the Scrolls, Doji, Fenrir, Sword of Bushido, Rakai, Sar Mikal, and Mr. Christmas. It's thanks to all these people and all the others on screen that this channel stays alive, and for that I am very grateful. That said, I hope to see you all in the next Elder Scrolls lore video. Bye-bye.